Hello all, I'm, I'm getting there. Let me see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do uh, this button, and then I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do this, and I can hear myself, which means you guys can hear me too, unless I'm buffering. And if I'm buffering, there's not a damn thing I can do about it. Someone wrote in the comments yesterday, they were like, hey, it's great, but you gotta have to fix the, the buffering. And uh, I began. I, I've purchased property overnight across the nation. I have established a relationship with the local government to create a utility monopoly to buy the uh, one foot diameter property and lease that dirt hole. Uh, we've begun to lay cable. Melanie was up early this morning uh, digging fiber optic cable. Um, we, we are on it. We are, gonna, we are gonna do everything we can to make sure this stream comes directly to you. Because, because we care. And actually, if, if, if I had the money, I, I, I would do that. And we might all end up with the money. Okay, I'm gonna take this out now. I have learned that the key to not having the mute button on is to wear a monitor. And if I have an in-ear monitor, this is probably boring as, as heck, but if I have an in-ear monitor, I will always know if the mute's on. Here's the problem. This ear in your monitor has a mute and it makes me sound like I'm drunk. I literally slur my speech when I have the monitor in because I'm listening to myself and I can't, uh, I can't hear myself either. Man, that is, I'm just all up in your face, ain't I? Is that better? Man, the all, like for days, if you guys have been like, dude, would you fucking back up? Is that, uh, is that, is that less intense? Is that more intense? Is that less intense? I think that I might have uh, adjusted this. I have to close a, I don't have to, I close a window at night and it comes right down here. So there's no way I can just leave this set up. In the summer, I, I just leave the mosquito screen up. But, uh, but now I can't. I don't see any complaints. I don't see any complaints about um, buffering, which is great. That's super duper. Um, why am I streaming today? I don't know. I think because of the buffering, uh, also my neighbors have been building a deck. You guys have heard that all summer, and they are on the routing stage where they're they're you know doing a lot of routing work. And those of you who use a lot router knows that uh, next to a pressure washer, it's one of the more annoying sounds at a construction site. And many of you are like, you are you living in a construction site? Yes, I am. They. It's right there. My neighbor's right there. Uh, they're building a deck, and good for them. Um, the fact that they've been building that deck allows me... You guys don't know this about me. But when I was a kid, I wasn't dreaming necessarily of the same luxuries as, say, uh, the normal person would. I, when, I think Caddyshack probably did it to me. Although the life of Chevy Chase looked appealing to me, I was definitely like, wow, that's pretty cool, man, to be hanging around with a pipe organ, Playboy Bunny, uh, you know, playing, I was born to love you, that, that all that stuff. It, that's cool, and all these checks, and she's like, here's a check for $50,000. And, and, and But it was Bill Murray. That dude had a leaf blower in his den. And that changed me. That gave me a sense that I could accomplish anything I wanted to if I to it. I'm going to move my mouse right here just for a little bit of vitriol for people. Um, I got written today by someone, uh, The Beard, talking about some vitriol and talking about my episode, uh, Usury is Blind Trust. Okay, that's enough vitriol for you guys. Um, oh, I saw a raptor over there. I was going to show you that, but it's a very large piece of bark that just happens to look like a barred owl. Um, blind trust usury, right? If you guys don't remember that episode, well, you know, maybe it didn't happen. Maybe it's a figment of my imagination. It's very possible. But I've been thinking about the antelope. The buffering is atrocious. Okay, I'll shut it down. I'm ignoring... All right, guys, it, it's, 
If you can hear me, I'll shut the show down. I'm really sorry. I am hardwired in. I I could go to another location, I guess, and, and try and find that, but the, the show just doesn't have kind of footprint right now where we can like do things like that. Okay, uh, we'll shut it down. Um, yeah, apparently it's it's buffering big time. Maybe YouTube. Yeah, if you guys like all I see is YouTube buffering. I don't actually see a message from Rockfin buffering. No complaints about the buffering because we want the stream. Yeah, I want the stream to go on too, Amel. But um, if it's like really bad, just wait. I, I actually need to figure out if Rockfin's buffering. Mel, if you let me know, let me know. Because if Rockfin's good, if it's both, then that's definitely me. And then I, I just, I'm just gonna have to shut it off. Um, for those of you waiting. Okay, well now I don't see any 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 chats at all. Maybe you guys are in the back, like it's all chat saying it's all good. Um, I am hanging in as well. That's pro I guess these are all behind. So maybe I'm actually not even reading your chats in time. I bet you that that is it because of the the buffering thing. Dang it! Mm. Why aren't you talking, James, right? Well, because if it's buffering, it's buffering, and, and that I would feel like it would probably know you less. Uh, although I'm not seeing any chat at all. <laughs> so I, I, I bet you that it's not it's not showing it. Um, yeah. All right. It's better now, says Mandy. Then Chad says no. It's good for me. Please don't stop. Oh, I love it when, when women say that. Um, no, says Star Sorcerer. <laughs> uh, don't, says Amel. Don't, okay, that guy is a liar, says I am. Well, he's probably just seeing a different reality than you are, I am. That's all. He's probably just seeing a different reality. If you can keep going, that'd be I'm just going to ignore it. And I want you guys to know, is that... No, everyone says no. See, Melanie, I don't know what you mean by no. But Catherine Hopkins uh, is automatically jumping to the front of the line with authority, and she's saying don't stop. So, yeah, I'm going to buffer my balls and not worry about it. Um, the uh, trust is usury. Again, sorry if it's buffering. I, I, it's, yeah, there's no more buffering. Uh, trust is usury. Um, looking at the energy of that, um, I would like for you to think about why does the antelope drink? drink from the river does the antelope trust the lion is that a trust relationship does the antelope say ah lion good day sir you are the predator here you are the noble government for example and I'm going to drink now and I I'm only going to drink now because I trust that you will not eat me when I do it do, do, do you think that happens and I ask you that because, and this, I need some of you to buckle your seatbelts on this one. What if trust, what if trust was the sin? What if trust itself, not blind trust, not blind trust, what if trust is sin? What if trust is the deepest kind of victimhood you could ever endure? And that you were trained from the moment you were born to extend it over and over and over again. And we've discussed the principle of veal, that many of us are raised like veal. Our muscles are kept in atrophy by this system that, that we co-create, by the way. And that I know that, that we have such a delicate, dainty look on trust. But just uh, trust yourself enough to have this discussion. See, many people out there believe that the way to 
be good is to never ever challenge yourself or even have faith that you could endure something like the glory hole for example that that lesson itself would be and you never ever sticking your junk in the glory hole but in truth the one that actually did stick his junk in the glory hole has an entire new dimension of understanding of what that was like and I as his fellow man have more trust in him than someone else who simply says you were evil to stick your junk in the glory hole because that person who's casting him as evil for sticking his junk in the glory hole does not trust that, that man has a sovereign ability to sin that he is learning from his sin that he is growing deeper and deeper into the understanding of the sanctity of his genitals by the very act of shoving them into a glory hole. But on the other side, we're told, no, 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 it was just evil. And, and for you suggesting that someone should do that, you're evil, James. And I never suggested that someone should do that. I suggested that we have enough trust and faith in their individuality that they are the best captain for this decision. The other theory is, is that you are not the best captain for your decision. An outside authority is telling you, do not stick your junk in that hole. And that you would be moral by obeying. But you cannot be moral under obedience. That obedience and morality are not the same thing. They're not even close. They're not even close. And if you look at our veterans and if you look at our nurses today, you understand this. That what makes a good nurse is accuracy under obedience. That's literally the definition of a nurse. And the ones that are going to keep their job are going to be able to manifest the highest percentage of accuracy under obedience. And if you need proof of this, look at what the medical industry has always done whether it be circumcision. Here's an act of obedience and accuracy, not morality. To do this to an infant is to purposely know that you will never hear the complaints in a rational way from this baby, that the type of pain dilation that's happening during this ritual will never be recorded because we cannot even understand the victim. The victim doesn't even have autonomy yet. And that, that that most delicate age, a nurse is one who shows not morality. And before all this hit, before even universal health care hit, you did not see nurses losing their jobs and writing about it online because they refused to circumcise a baby. That when that happened, it was always an exception, if it ever happened. So don't start typing, well, that happened once in night. I bet it did. And the fact that you remember it happened in 1964 kind of proves how novel it was. And then that's just example one, that medical prohibition, medicine, the prohibition of medicine, cannabis itself, through all of the realm of fentanyl, through all of the Ritalin, through all of these stages of not once ever being able to demonstrate a chemical imbalance, not once ever ever being able to show or prove a chemical imbalance yet a seven trillion dollar a year industry seven billion dollar a year industry excuse me is still allowed to thrive because of the accuracy of obedience that's just the second example that your entire endocannabinoid system is being asphyxiated by the very predator who's insisting that you need to take a needle for your health. And that that endocannabinoid asphyxiation that's been put to you itself has been put to you not for a year, not for a decade, but a fucking century, an entire century of prohibition against medicine. And that's just a third example. When you unwrap the truth of what a nurse and what a doctor is, you are looking 
at an enlisted person and an officer. The doctor is the officer, the enlisted person is the nurse, the scrubs are the fatigues, the white coat is the dress uniform. A soldier is not moral. A soldier is not moral. A soldier, excuse me, is amoral. Amoral that they become physical property. That a UCMJ is created a uniform code of military justice to administer that property. And the writ of habeas corpus does not exist. You are not responsible for what you do in that uniform. And none of us can sue the nurse that performed the circumcision. We have to sue the hospital. It's the exact same thing. But nurses today who are performing this mass with accurate obedience insist that they are smarter than soldiers and when you tell them what happened in Iraq they say that has nothing at all to do with me and that that is nothing at all the 18 weapons of mass destruction has no relation at all to COVID-19 and they're in their scrubs and they're walking into Denny's and you know what happens an old fat ass Republican who believes we landed on the fucking moon, says, hey, I'm going to buy your bricks because thank you for your service. And it's the exact same thing. And the same nurses who said thank you for your service know and were saying how wrong it was to do those things, but are now telling you that this is about saving innocent lives. That's exactly what Marines had to tell themselves to survive while they were defending poppy fields or blowing the heads off of camels for target practice or setting oil fields on fire to save the environment. These things that we do show the brutal accuracy of our obedience. And they are amoral, not moral. And they work because of trust. Not blind trust, trust. That blind trust makes it look like you weren't able to see what's happening. And that shit is the dodo. It is not going to fly. It is not going to fly. Because we know now, the corona is so bright, the accuracy is unavoidable. And that the antelope, the antelope would never trust the lion. That if the antelope was told, well, the reason why you can drink, little Ann Annie, is because you can trust the lion to do that. And if you're willing, if you're still here, if it's not buffering, if you're buckled up, you've just seen that, well, wait a minute, trust is a, a really interesting prana economy, isn't it, James? Yes, it is. In fact, there's something much more efficient, healthy, sovereign, and productive than trust. The antelope does not need to trust the lion, nor can the antelope trust the lion. The antelope can pretend to trust the lion. The antelope can raise its children like a bunch of dumb retard autists running around. They don't even know what water is. They're running into trees, and, and all the antelopes are like, this is our gift. This is a gift. This is not a disease. We don't to cure this. This is our gift. And, and even though his immune system is destroying itself, it's, it's simply because of how unique he is. And honestly, if every speck of this dirt is dirt, that, that wouldn't happen to him. It, it's, it's, you're watching the psychosis because because must. James, should we not trust the world? It's not that you can't trust that world because I will never be able to convince you to pull your plasma out of the world. This world is too important to you. It's too important to me. I want my plasma all over this world. I want your plasma all over this world too. But I need you to consider the idea 
that the little finger grip you're using on your plasma that's extending from your compassion, that's leaving your body to go to someone else, does not have to be trust. That it can be something more respectful than trust. That you show respect to the lion, not through trusting him, but by understanding him. That your compassion for lion is what keeps you alive. And this is the surgery we do, right? That compassion is not consent. And it has to be the word compassion. This is why Jesus Christ was a superstar. Because it has to be this word. And if you don't pull this fucking word out of the garage and clean it off and actually look at what the fuck it really means, you're never going to get this. That you compassionate most when you're in disagreement. That you show the deepest form of respect to someone in your disagreements. That this compassion that you extend at that point is showing you the depth of who you are. And if you don't have that depth, you will create a false reality called trust. And you will create a system where everyone can trust the lion, that the lion is just doing what it can for the best of all the animals. And that, and that not only that, we extend our trust, we're happy to extend our trust. And our trust is even shown in our tribute to lion, that we pay the lion because we can trust him. In fact, we pay the lion so that we can create this mass psychosis around all of us. That no, 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 I trust the lion. Would I give him 45% of my grain if I did not trust him right now, says Antelope? And that when you were brought up in that system and you're seeing everyone else pay tribute to their trust for the lion, that you would naturally feel crazy to not adopt trust. And that the entire psychosis of trust itself is all of a sudden legitimized in the quicksand of its own mucus. Th that the entire thing is never even touching ground. That it's resting on this fantasy, and that fantasy is only able to reveal itself, or, or to sustain itself, sorry, through the mass psychosis of everyone else believing that this is true. Ants do this. Roaches do this. Every swarm of animal does this. We find power in the culture, we find power in the collective. That we go to the collective, and regardless if the collective is lying to us, is manipulating us, regardless if the collective even says, you can come in, but I'm gonna have to cut your genitals, that we will do it because of how much energy we gain from that system itself. So even performing this kind of surgery that I'm asking you to consider right now on your psyche, that the chiropractic involved to even consider taking your coccyx and moving it from trust a half an inch over into understanding is instantly probably going to be expensive because as soon as you do, you're all of a sudden going, well, fuck, if trust is a bad word, what am I going to do? And you're only going to be able to make it if you have something else to put in this tire and don't try and pretend like that means trust can't exist that when you get to that precipice and you do not jump over you're not going to make it just like antelope that the antelope would never drink because even though he understands the line he'd simply be like dude I know he's way over there and I know he's this fast and I've seen him this fast and I've seen him this fast and all the simulation neurons in my brain that are burning their fucking ass off to see how long will it take for Lion to get to me are telling me that I can take a drink right now. Even though I understand that, I cannot trust my understanding of Lion. So I'm not asking you to remove trust. I'm asking you to reinvent the roots from where that trust comes. More importantly, the kudzu of where that trust wraps around, what it finds to build and grow in this world. This is a different way of analyzing the world. Let's call it naturalism. You don't have to call it that. I just made that up. I might change my mind in 10 minutes, but call it naturalism. And remind yourself repeatedly that, well, no, I'm a naturalist. 
And the first rule of naturalists is, is that there would be nothing in nature that is not natural. That's the first rule. Guess what? You're in nature. You are in nature, which means you are natural, which means that the plastic you produce is natural. It's not going to be here for a thousand years. It's going to be here for maybe three and a half. Maybe. But you're natural. And that you're not some brilliant genius that's capable of being a completely natural system that's completely surrounded by everything natural, but somehow is able to make something unnatural. That itself is, is, is retarded, cleanse speak. It's a desperation for baptism. It's people that realize we can't fucking burn a witch to clean myself, so God damn it. I in the telegram how you have to wear headphones because I curse. You were right about that. This naturalism is going to cost you calories because you're no longer going to be able to rely on the dementia of the lies we tell ourselves. This idea that God was an idiot and made two mistakes in a row. This idea that, that we are completely worthless and weak but also capable of completely destroying the entire planet at exactly the same time. That what you're doing is trusting predator when you think those things. That by yourself unnatural, you are trusting predator because predator is the one that said you are unnatural. And because all the other antelopes are paying it tribute, it becomes very hard to not listen to the voice of predator. And probably the hardest truth to suffer at all, I know there's a saw, I know. Talk about it in the comments. Discuss how loud it is. You're going to have to pass this hurdle. You're going to have to drink. And the only way you're going to drink without having dementia is to not trust Lion, but to understand him. Lion is not evil. If lying was evil, lying would not exist. What I mean by that? That the definition of lying would be to, to decrepit himself. That lying would not be king of the jungle if he was. So lying is something different than evil is he. Lying is strong. Is strong evil? Do you truly believe that this world has the concept of strong and evil and that they go hand in hand? Because the only person who's ever told you that is Hollywood. It's the only person who's ever told you that. And they've used the most money, the most titty, the most cyboob, the most sparkle, the most makeup, the, the most the highest resolution cameras ever made to show you that. And that's Predator. Predator singing to you. He's telling you you can trust me. And that here are my teeth, and this is here's where I will bite you, and that you can trust me, and everything's fine. I will kill you, says Predator Antelope, but it will be after you've given me a life of tribute first. And when I come for you, I promise you, Antelope, that I will have the finest blips and dashes and dots, and the most obedient, accurate psychopaths you've ever seen. Soldiers tending as I eat you. And I will eat you with my cancer. I will eat you with my COVID. I will eat you with AIDS. I will eat you with all the things that I have presented and that I bring. And that I will be civilized when I eat you. And that you will trust me in exchange. And the one regret that those Cosmo articles never mention when you die is that everybody knows the truth of Predator when we die. That the finally can afford to see. And that sight is worth our entire lives. And I don't think that we go, I do not think we die with regrets. I think we die like the antelope. I think we die with epiphany. 
and our epiphysis is secreted, much like the uh, adrenaline and the morphine secretes into the antelope, right? That the, uh, I don't know what chemical it is, sorry guys. But the uh, antelope feels good when he's being eaten. This happens with most predators. So relaxation comes down. The epiphysis has been triggered. The melanin has been, uh, melatonin I should say, has been emitted. The suicide trigger that we talk about has been released. Your entire life you've been holding this suicide trigger until you die. And when you die, you're simply not able to hold your thumb anymore. And it releases the epiphysis, MDMA. The sand, your brain sand, secretes its final revelation. And where does that chemical go? The metatonin into your epiphysis. And you reach epiphany. Now, there is walking epiphany. We're seeing it right now. I would argue with you that billionaires have a sort of walking epiphany to them. And that the reason why that they have money is simply because it's a shadow of the energy bubble that they're able to yield. That you're looking at a reality bubble generation where that person is able to imaginate so hard that literally everyone around him starts pretending that he's a billionaire too. Now, some of you might be able yeah, well, to pretend. That's fake. Pretend. Pretend means to be fake. And actually, if, if you look back at the history of this, the word pretend never meant fake. The word pretend meant to prepare for something. It's a rival. To make a place for the arrival, to clear the landing pad for what was about to present itself here. Well, then why aren't us all billionaires? Because that shit's scary. Why is it scary? I don't know. I think it has a lot to do with when you're pulling that much reality, when you're able to run that kind of turbine at full tilt, you're also having to see a lot of things that might be uncomfortable. And that the fact that you could see those uncomfortable things, one example might be mortality, maybe. I don't know. I'm a billionaire in training. We all are. But that... But, and by the way, if, if you hate money, man, you're going to hate that. You're going to hate that. You'll be like, oh, well, money is not the key to it. And actually, money is currency. And even if the currency is the most dirtiest fiat ever made in the world, it's showing you the neurological movement of prana. It's showing you that. It's showing you that witness is truly the only, the only ingredient that makes all this happen, that we... We see these things in others just as we ask to have things seen in ourselves. If you want to probably understand it the best, I'd have to say that you have to picture yourself shopping in the grocery store naked. And that's not going to work for everybody. Some of you are fucking gorgeous naked and you know it. So this whole thing is, is blown. But you're going to have to like put like a, a butt cheek spreader thing and then like have the picture of your anus like broadcast if you think I cuss just wait till you hear this broadcasted like on your forehead so everyone can, I don't know I don't even know how it would work but let's just leave this analogy if you imagine that which you already have sorry um, the sustainability that's impossible so I think a billionaire understands th understands their nakedness probably more and I only say that because a billionaire is not someone that's able to collect energy. I think that a billionaire truly is just someone who doesn't lose energy. That all of us have a vortex for collecting this energy. And I only say that because you know billionaires when you were a kid. That when you were four, five, and even ten years old, and you were playing on the play yard, you recognized the billionaire way. That there were kids that were able to create this reality bubble of fantasy that was so appealing, so strong, that you didn't mind them being the hero. You didn't mind them being the hero because it was such a good ride. It was such a good ride. And that's really what Donald J. Trump is. He's a pretender on an epic scale. 
he's a dipper in the world of pretending. He's a Lance Armstrong of pretending. And I don't think that any politician would ever get to that tour without doping. And that's going to take some seriously twisted chiropractic. Things that hopefully you wouldn't be willing to do to your spine. Hopefully. But the beauty of nature is, is that there's going to be people out there that are willing to do that. And the only way you're going to survive is not to make sure there are no billionaires. That's what government does. It doesn't do it well. I'm just saying that that's their, their motive in there. Is that taxes are the great equalizer. But the, the better defense is simply to learn to understand. The antelope understands the lion by compassionating what it would be like if he was a lion too. And it's fascinating because if you show a lot of compassion to a lion, what do you think ends up happening to the antelope? If the antelope extended so much plasma into the effects of understanding what it would be like to be a lion too, that if the antelope was to do that so effectively, that the antelope itself would simply notice that it was a lion one day and that the entire time it was pretending to be an antelope and that there were certain profits in being an antelope because no matter where that lion goes all eyes are on him the lion can't pick his nose the lion can't scratch his ass I'm not saying he can't but I'm saying it takes a lot more calories to do that it takes so many more calories to walk around the grocery store naked. See what I'm saying? It's the same thing. And that's why the antithesis of nakedness is scrubs. Right? The antithesis of that nakedness is a uniform. That's why we have them. And a long time ago we knew that. That it was intrinsic. That uh, fashion literally made you warm when you were cold. <laughs> what, what else do you need? And that every child, when they're growing up, they're, they're typically kind of paranoid about fashion. Am I fitting in? Am I wearing the right things? Am I fitting in? And that, that's not an unhealthy thing. That you're watching a child practice prana economy. It's actually really healthy. It means your kid works. It means all the systems in your kid works. Because suddenly he wakes up and he's obsessed about camouflage pants or... Uh, what would be the fact? I guess skinny jeans. So I'm going to go, oh, Dad, i got to get some skinny jeans. Why? Because I don't want to make sure and no one thinks I can wear boots because cause, cause wearing boots will be bad. So you want to go out and get skinny jeans? Yeah. Where do we get them? At the grocery store. The, 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 the desperation for that is showing you how important that energy is. It's crucial. It's crucial. You know why kids have pimples is because in order to sacrifice yourself to grow, think about how much you grow as a teenager. You're growing like, what, 20 times as fast as you would as an adult? That the sacrifice for that, what's necessary for that, is pure extreme vitriol. That all magic comes through vitriol. That the compassion of the antelope turns him into a lion because of the sacrifice he made to try over and over and over again to compassionate that lion, no matter how much it hurt. No matter how terrifying it was, no matter how naked it felt to compassionate as that lion, that understanding is reached. So understanding becomes the final frontier. And that there will be a day when we are wearing our coat of many colors, when we would physically compassionate into each other overnight that we would wake up as new beings which is probably what we do anyway right and there's so many that don't like this that don't want to be lions that really want to be an antelope they will find ways to convince you that you need this needle and that you need these preservatives and that you need this autism The fact that we have over 200 autoimmune diseases is showing you that we're in a war with our own bodies. That there is a rebel force deep inside your blood and bones fighting against us right now. That that rebel force is saying to its captain 
This is a fucking revolt. You take your antelope ass off the fucking ship or come back as a lion. And that the autoimmune diseases that we see right now are simply mutiny. Smart, caring, compassionate mutiny. And that the antelopes are encircling you. Actually, I love antelopes, so I don't even like this. But that the antelopes don't want to be lion. They want to pick their nose. They don't want to be watched all the time. That witness itself causes a posture that is too painful to bear. And so they will crush you and convince you that it's because you lack trust in predator. That's your problem. And that you have conspiracy. That you have the virus of conspiracy. Imagine a cow telling another cow, Hey man, you fucking suck for not wanting that rancher's injection. What kind of tool are you to think that the farmer has anything but our best interests in heart? It's the exact same thing. Really, really, really no difference at all. None. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. I do have books. I, I do have books. I have five books, and you guys are welcome to read them. I love how people are, sometimes some of my critics are like, you guys just sitting there just asking for money. It's like, no. No, I, I wrote a book. It was fucking hard. And I'm asking you, hey, hey, if you want to buy my book, you should buy it. Because I spent a lot of fucking work on it. I put a lot of vitriol into that fucking book. It's not free. You're not getting that for free. I worked my ass off for that book. But you know you're living in crazy world when we start to attack people because they're an author. Well, what do you say? An author? It's like, yeah, I'm a fucking author. It's like badass. Like, men would get blowjobs for being an author if, if this world was, like, run right. It's, anyway. It's, don't put so much pause after that word. Uh, the, 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 even the, the YouTube, I lost my thought. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to stop cussing lady who's having to wear headphones. I, I also need you guys to realize that, that the reason why I speak in metaphors is because language itself is a hypothetical. And there's no way that my words are ever going to get you back in the real world. At the moment you're listening to the words themselves, those are hypotheticals. Those are tumblers. But if I can speak in metaphor, I'm saving you the translation back into real life. That you are more attached to the real life, not through your rational fucking understanding of words, but that the metaphor behind them is saving you calories. That you ride that metaphor because you get to see where does this go? What's it like being an antelope who's suddenly compassionating predator? Who's applying their animistic abilities to predator itself? And saying, I will ever overcome you. And Predator says, you will never overcome me. And you look at Predator and says, I already am. And Predator says, how? You will say, because I understand your deepest wants and desires, Predator. And what is Predator now? Predator's tangible. Predator's pokeable. And that scares the shit out of people that don't want to think Predator's real. They want to go the opposite of tangible. They want to go the opposite of pokeable. They want to give Predator more power, not less. War Machine, if you're still listening, yesterday you wrote in the comments, well, James, evil. I've seen a child's throat slit and things like that. All, all, all fine arguments. He was discussing the disagreement he had with me about the symbolism of whatever this event took place. And that by me ignoring that symbolism, I'm ignoring evil. And no. No, I am performing fucking mutiny on the psychosis of this mass body. That I'm telling this mass body that every single goddamn day you wake up and you suckle at the teat of MSN and you listen to them tell you another story and then you interpret it as satanic and you think because you interpreted their milk as satanic, you're somehow able and allowed to drink it. But you're still drinking it. And that the only way to stop this predator from spitting in this milk is to stop drinking the fucking milk. Stop. Stop. 
And when you're applying the symbolism to it, you're worshipping it. Do you honestly think... Do you honestly fucking think that the person who writes Madonna's stage show doesn't know that symbolism makes your titties hard? Do you honestly think that they do not purposely put that stuff in movies for the sole purpose of knowing that you will sit there and watch it like a fucking mind slave? And then turn around and interpret to others. And you will use that interpretation to others to justify what you're doing. This is not a takedown on you, War Machine. This is why I wrote the tweet that shallow respect is shown in kindness. Deep respect is shown in disagreement. I'm challenging you to take more authority over the prana economy that you keep with those predators. And that when you listen to MSN and when you know the names of these people, you already worship them. And that by me coming on saying, I don't know who was involved, I'm pretty sure it was a giant ass from Kardashian, that was the most I could do to at least tell people that this is real, but I haven't actually seen it. And that I can't see it because to see it is to worship it. And I bet you that there's the most symbolic stuff ever. And that I bet you that there's some brilliant decoder out there that's showing you the secret meaning of the seat numbers where those people were that got trampled and their birth dates matched against a giant uh, calendar showing you how six and six and six here and eight and seven and three and Yakuza this and, and Shikomi and all this other stuff. And I don't think any of it's not real. And when I tell you there's something more profound happening, happening called symbolism, you guys get mad at that. You say, you're ignoring that and I'm telling you I'm showing you the fucking truth of resonance itself and you're rejecting that as being that's not titillating enough James that you're telling me that this organic resonance that occurs through symbolism itself is showing you that something even bigger is happening but you don't want anything bigger happening because you already are having enough trouble wrapping your fucking arms around trusting predator that you can't even fathom that there's something else happening outside of that. And that the lion has no problem letting the antelopes think that he brings the thunder. And that the lion will even go so far if he wants, if he wants to save calories, that the next time there's a lightning storm, the lion will on the cliff for no other purpose than being seen against the backdrop of the thunders of Thor itself. That is what Predator does because Predator preserves his prana economy through all things. And that Lance Armstrong preserves his prana economy by sticking whatever needle is required inside of him to maintain the reality bubble that he is the fastest. Just as Lance Armstrong dopes to be the best, Millions of Americans dope themselves to be the worst. That addiction itself is the elite doping themselves, but they don't want to be the elite, they want to be the delete. That they are competing for the lowest of the low. And if you have any questions about this, look at the equality flag. That's a seating chart. Those colors on that rainbow flag are a seating chart, aren't they? And you know that... Well, I see your lesbianness, but I raise you my black skin. Well, I see your lesbianness, raise your black skin, and throw in a genital mutilation. Oh my goodness. We have jackpot. Jackpot, cue the wheelchair. And that now you have the exact same doping happening, but on the other level. the stars let's see what's going on one two there's their chat they're sarcastic doing some amazing work with leather holy shit that guy i hope you open a, a shop sark i mean if, if that brings you joy i hope you do that is what i mean because that's what the con that's what all this is all of this is 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 releasing this entire situation is releasing you 
that there's a fairy man that is that has rolled his fucking ship up on the shore. And his bony ass fucking hand is reaching out from that Grim Reaper robe. And he's asking you for a piece of silver. And your acceptance, your compassionation, your understanding of Predator is you paying that fairy man for your fucking soul. That you were looking at fairy man and you were taking the vitriol of accepting the truth of life and you were secreting that pain. Oh, and all of a sudden, a fucking piece of silver pops out of your butthole. And it's shiny, don't worry, he'll take it. And you just secreted that. You secreted that from your sheer will, that the evaporation of blood cells mixed with the heart with your desire to be like, I just, I just want to get out of that fucking shithole and figure out what's going on, that that itself is the paying of the ferryman. And you realize, you didn't just die. Holy fuck. That you've been dead. That your whole goddamn life has been dead. Why? Because you've been trusting Predator. You've been trusting Predator. And you've been dead. And that who knew that this entire time, this world itself was the river fucking stick. And it was drowning the piss out of you. And it was asking you, hey man, you got a heart or not? You got a heart or not? You got a heart or not? And all this vitriol made you claw your way back up to that shit. That you're going to do more than drink. You're going to swim in this bitch. And that this place is your Imaginarium. That this place itself is your dojo. This is your canvas. And that the only thing that makes this worthwhile is now you've finally paid for it. That before this came, you paid for nothing. And you didn't have to because the entire river runs on trust. And this quicksand, this salty quicksand, is you resting on your fucking ass staring up at the sky, which is fine. Most of us spend our life that way. The river needs eyes. The river needs witness. Let them stay. Let them float. That they are no better or worse than you for not paying the ferryman, but you did. And you're riding on this new crystal ship. You're, you're on this new journey now. You were heading to what you think is the underworld, or what you've been told is the underworld. And that under and over and under and over have always been definitions of predator. Those who stand on the cliff during the thunderstorm get to call this world what it is. And that you, through the power of corona, through the power of mass death, have seen something different. That your heart was pulled up out of that river, that thick black river, and weighed next to a f And validity, validity is there. That the only way you would ever feel valid, the way you would ever feel cleansed, is if you and your ancestors spent decade upon decade, generation upon generation, millennium upon millennium, deluge upon deluge, thinking yourself is not worthy. And that you persisted through that doubt. And that all the sin you committed, all the lies you made, all the false trust you, you do, all the things that you usurp from others, and you still think you're worthy. And that is the stainlessness of God, isn't it? That that is truly the fire. That you have gone into the depths of the earth. You've crawled into the interior. Visit the interior of the earth and find your resolution. And under the pressure of that, you will create a new diamond and you shine on like a crazy, crazy diamond. That's the only way you would shine. That this path, this journey through the underworld, you performing this Virgil Marathon through Dante's Inferno is the only reason why you're able to feel so much power. And as you're watching this world full of people telling you to trust or don't trust Predator, that you've understood something different the entire time. That trust itself is the black magic from following me. Whether I should or should not trust Predator is distracting me from my ability to compassionate. The biggest way that distracts me is because I've been told by this person or this person 
that Predator is super evil. Or Predator, excuse me, or Predator is super good. And that your whole time you're just like, well, fuck, which is it, which is it, which is it? And the entire time is neither. Predator is someone requires understanding. Predator is compassionatable. Last person that a Zionist will tell you to show compassion for is the devil. The predator. That the religious that freak out over the things that I talk about, these people that run these channels that are just thriving on that whole idea, that they don't care if you trust or don't trust Predator. They just need you to not compassionate him. Because the moment you start compassionating Predators, the moment you surpass them, and if everybody leaves the river, these people are going to be puddles. They're going to have nowhere else to go. When you look at Egypt and you see Quetzalcoatl, that we talked about yesterday, the vulture and the snake, you're starting to understand that the continents are closing in, that the lessons, the vitriol from each continent has done its magic, and that there's a joining of crusts, that the plates themselves are joining through the neurons of technology, that the Morse code system, the, the telegraph, all these systems that we've been building this entire time, we've been building the Leviathan. And that our Leviathan, we are not to trust nor are we not to not trust. We are simply going to compassionate it. We are going to understand it. When you understand the lion, you see osteoporosis. When you understand the lion, you see a fat belly. When you understand the lion, you see laziness. You see glaucoma. And when you understand that, your entire reality bubble changes. Why? Because your prana is more. You're waking up and you're not trusting or not trusting and you're not suffering the loss of calories from doing one of those things. You're compassionating instead. You're spending profitable now. People around you start to say, hey, you seem to know what's going on. And you don't feel any different. You don't, but you have more energy. You just do. You have so much energy that you don't, you don't fall for predator's tricks anymore. To be a mask or a job or a mandate, right? That those things just bounce off you like ping pong balls. Why does that happen? Is it because God finally said you're worthy or is it because you stopped shedding so much fucking electricity? And it's both. God loves you because you stopped shedding so much electricity. He's like, damn, it's about time, bitch. Fuck, man. It's like God made this entire uh, electric bumper car ride for us, you know, where the electricity is wired into the ceiling. He made it for us. He gave us cars with bumpers on them, with fucking bumpers on them. And we're like, don't you dare fucking flow that current through that thing. John Jacob Jinkelheimer, if you put electricity through, the oh. And the entire time, God's like, Jesus, man. Um, no, no, not you. I just meant like metaphorically. Sorry, son. I know I always do that. Sorry. But Jesus, man, you guys got to fuck, man. Have some fun. It's like a tilt the world. It's all you guys like over there. What the fuck's wrong with you? Retarded antelopes. Retarded autistic antelopes. And I love antelopes. I take it back. I, I don't want to call those. But the, I, I can't take it back. We've been going on way too long. There's too much of it. I said I was going to look at the stars. I didn't do it. Let's see. The retarded antelope says be real. That's right. Um, yeah, Newsom's a good one. Um, here's one of the eagles. The, Cyg the Cygnus right here. Um, what do we have going on? We got... Uh, where is everybody? Where is everybody? There's Orion. So it's going to be... The ecliptic's going to be a little bit north of Orion. Or south. Orion's kind of in the middle. You start to learn this as you're looking. Where are all the damn planets? There it is. All right. Wow, Mercury and Mars are having a little a little meeting. They're like, man. Mercury's like telling Mars, man. Fucking James. Fucking told everybody that I wasn't actually the Caduceus. I'm fucking pissed. And Mars is like, let's have a fucking war, man. 
Let's go kick his ass. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's do it, man. We are strong. Mercury's like, yeah, you're right, Mars. You know, Mars, you're not so bad. He's like, yeah, I'm not actually violent. I just believe that we should find our inner power. Everyone else is like, oh, well, you've got to be violent then if you're going to find your own inner power, right? Meanwhile, look at the sun right in Libra. I'm telling you guys. Weighing that heart, right? You there. You who have climbed out of the river. What does your heart, what does your heart weigh, my friend? Do you trust me? And the young neophyte pays the fairy man and looks up at the at Anubis and says, No, I do not trust you. I compassionate you, my friend. Here's Venus and Sagittarius. Look, Venus and the moon hanging out in Sagittarius. Um, that ought to be interesting. I'll tell you what's really fascinating is look at this. Holy shit. We got some black ops going on, my friends. Capricornus, Saturnia, and Jupiterio are freaking hanging out, right? What do they got going on? I guess we will find out, right? Look at that. They're right there next to Aquarius. Now, if I have looked at this right, these guys are moving into Aquarius. So they are heading their way into Aquarius. Let's see. No, that's just... Uh, sometimes I, I used to know the shortcuts to that. But um, is it M? No, is it L? No. Is it return? No. Anyway, um, I'm pretty sure that these are probably going to go this way. So he's heading into Aquarius. I say pretty sure because if I if I flipped it, then it would it would show me the backwards, the opposite. By the way, uh, Cetus and um, there was a special discovery special on the other day. I was cooking dinner and it was on. And it was a uh, really great host. He was like, and all over the world, no matter where I go, every temple has one thing people seeking the salvation through the triumph of the sea and he was pointing to the ceiling check this out he was pointing to the ceiling <laughs> of a chapel and he was telling everybody that that it was the adventures of the sea that was making the uh uh the muslims uh feel that they had been saved that it was the movement through the sea and that, and that it was trade and, and flood. And actually, he's looking <laughs> and there's literally the constellation sea. And this idea of Jonah and the whale, if you haven't seen this, look at the astrotheology of Christ. But, but the journey of, of Cepheus is the sun following the ecliptic. And even the Discovery Channel doesn't know that. Even when it's painted on the ceiling, that these ancients from the past are looking into the future saying, you're a fucking retard. It's the stars, man. It's the stars. And the biggest proof you could ever have of that is that we invented astronomy. That the atheists came in and said, guys, we have to cover up astrology. I told you earlier, you're not going to make someone stop trusting something. All you can do is redirect that. That each of us, the witness canons, we can't choose where we turn this witness. I mean, we could choose where we turn this witness, but we cannot turn it off. It will be on all the time. And if you give that witness to naughty things, then you're feeding naughty things. If you give that witness to the media, you're feeding the media. If you give that witness to James True, you are feeding James True. That your witness right now is every single piece of pollen that you have. Every single bit of juice that you have right now you're giving to me and I want whatever you give that to to be sanctified and because no one else is going to tell you that that I get in trouble when I tell you that you when you witness something you are worshipping that thing that you were giving it worship that you were making it that altar that this collection of all of us in this chat room right now on this time even through the buffering is a type of worship. It is, and I want you to know that. And if you want to write about how I'm satanic or I, th I think I'm a god or whatever, I don't fucking care. I just want you to learn the lesson of how powerful your witness is. That's all. We cover our cuts with band-aids. Witness itself causes us pain. And I don't wear a band-aid for me. I wear a band-aid for you, believe it or not, so that everyone else does not have to witness the pain. Because when they witness the pain, they are worshiping that pain, they are seeing that pain, and they are reliving that pain. That you're reliving these metaphors. 
they echo through your own personal synchronicities, right? That they jingle truth sometimes, or they don't. That you are looking for reflections. And that you need these reflections because you are learning to not trust Predator, but to compassionate him. Which means you are going to have to develop an autonomy. And that autonomy is going to come by understanding how powerful your witness is. But apply that witness to yourself. So, James D., some of us are on the hardest vision quest of our life right now. We're trying to find the value of self-witness. And we needed someone right now to tell them that what you worship is what you witness. Because that is the only thing that broke through. And that's what turns an antelope into a lion. That's all it takes. That is like Cheerios, right? Like a really good breakfast. That would require the same thing. <clears throat> there is a Telegram chat, and there's like a sort of a public one. Which, which I think is probably good to distribute over the chat. I'm answering some chat now. I'm not really in charge of that. I, I, but I really hope that one of our mods or, or, or whoever wants to take the, the, that reign and decide whatever is necessary. I will not moderate that. I, I'm not going to moderate that. But I definitely uh, check it out. I, I, most of my ideas come from this awesome tribe, and a lot of them <laughs> I connect with through Telegram. So, um yeah, I encourage that for everyone else too. Um, yeah, we got we got some cool stuff happening right now. Uh, Melanie has just been <laughs> kicking so much ass; it's been amazing. Uh, she really picks up slack where I I'm not so good, and it allows me to compassionate other things. <laughs> She's compassionating different things, so. I'd tell you more, but I, I just have to wait because I'm I don't know the dates yet. But I think something's gonna happen big tomorrow. Tomorrow's the tenth. And I'm pretty sure that 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 one of our things is gonna be ready tomorrow. Although we don't know for sure, so I guess that's why we won't say anything. But anyway, lots of cool stuff's happening. And I uh, hope you guys have a great day. And we will see you on the uh, next time. Let's enjoy some good music. Hey, was this buffering? G give me a percentage, please, in chat of how much it buffered through the show. Like, if it, if it felt like 50% of the time it was buffering, could you please type 50%? Um, it, would, it would be helpful if all of you would do that, especially if people were doing that in Rockfin, too. Um, that way we can, I can try and figure out where exactly uh, this is coming from. So uh, thanks, for, thanks for being here, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm going to play some music now, and I'm hoping to see some percentages um, of what the buffering was like. So... All right, um, I actually can't remember how to start the outro. I've sort of had my James D. talk got me all over Clint. I love you, man. I, I don't even know if I'm even reading you right, but there's a, these vision quests are always the hardest when we're alone. And that's, that's why it's vision quests. It's, keep in mind, this entire society, no one takes a vision quest. No one. <laughs> Which means if you do, you're going to be fucking insane. So, um, yeah. All right.